Hello everyone, today we talk about von Clausewitz's life and times in the broader introduction to the von Krieger series that we will start uh, on Schwerpunkt soon. Um, I won't um, update that um, very often because I believe I, I, I want to make essentially one uh, video per paragraph of the Von Krieger and that will happen I think like once or twice a week. Um, naturally Schwerpunkt will remain mostly themed on history and military history, that's the main um, topic essentially of the channel, but uh, this is gonna be interesting I believe as, as I explained in the other video and it can also work for me better as a gap filler, not because it's um, kind of easier to, to, to discuss about um, to comment on on von Clausewitz's uh, theory at all, uh, but at, at, s at least it's a more compact, you know, text. And it doesn't take me, you know, further time to research to to put up something. So it can be um, also to make. We'll try to make kind of shorter videos on this occasion. It really depends on the the length of the paragraphs because certain paragraphs of the von Krieger are extremely short, others are extremely long. So that will really depend, but it can work a bit like also as a gap filler given that in the future I will have perhaps a bit less time. I will try to keep it naturally a, um, at this point one video a day, but um, can it happen? Maybe I, uh, that I won't have time. It, it, this is not important. What I want to do um, today is a chronotaxis of um, uh, von Clausewitz's biography and works essentially. Um, and the um, political slash military and social uh, context, basically, in which uh, the von Clausewitz was was living, as well as the literary, uh, artistic, and scientific production of those times. The, the latter, um, actually, th this is important because it makes you understand um, the man and and his thought, uh, essentially. Uh, we have s seen how von Clausewitz was a very well. Um, educated and cultured person, he was very intelligent, very curious, and he was well acquainted with the major, um, you know, in intellectual development of his, his age, and um, that's something you can notice from from his prose. He uh, he actually spans from very various fields of, of knowledge, and he's he has this extremely um, um, this amazing, I would say, uh, ability of synthesis, putting together so many, uh, even metaphors and analogies that um, are drawn from these various fields of knowledge, and that yet are always so very effective, so very clear. And um, it 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 will be amazing. We will see this when when we will read him. But um, I I it's important because you you can see that there are there is material taken from from history, from art. From the world of uh, of uh, from from literature, from the world of technique, um, of um, of science, uh, purely meant. Um, he in the von Krieger is really a book that is also meant to be read by by anyone. This is also very important. So we will focus on that now when we will read it. But let's just start this and make it um, trying to make it simple. So. Karl von uh, Karl Philipp Gottlieb von Clausewitz was his name. Von Clausewitz was born in Burg, uh, close to Magdeburg. Actually, the, the town today is called um, Burg by Magdeburg. Uh, I also was very close to to that at um, Travemund, and f unfortunately, I on vacation, and I unfortunately I, I didn't visit Burg by Magdeburg von Clausewitz's tomb. Uh, uh, you know, I have to 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 get get there one back one once again. Absolutely, um, it we're in, in, in this is in Sachsen Anhalt in, in Germany. Um, von Clausewitz's family was of Polish origins, uh, seemingly. Um, he belonged to this um, well-off middle class, substantially. That was prevalently made by, um, uh, I would say, medium small level grade of of bu bureaucratic functionaries, uh, small land owners, uh, cadet branches of the, the noble families, by professionals um, and uh, intellectuals. So, uh, social groups that at that time were taking acti actively part to the in into the movement of uh, Prussian patriotic uh, rebirth and uh, were cultivating cultural interests. Um, and uh, even if um, within the traditional respect towards the 
constituted powers, um, they they weren't uh, insensitive to the new uh, revolutionary ideas that were essentially uh, in, in ferment uh, uh, in those years. So, in 1789, as we know, the French Revolution broke um, a, a balance, an equilibrium that same, seemed un, un, unmovable, unchangeable uh, up to that point. In 1800, were codified. Uh, that, the, excuse me. That in, in, in later years, where were codified the uh, rights of men of the citizen. Um, this uh, the, the 19th century essentially opens I into uh, this context of um, uh, imperious, uh, unequal, and contradictory uh, technical and industrial development, where the bourgeoisie is I in ascent um, substantially. So Europe is um, sw swept by this. Um, is crossed by these uh, new ideas of people and nation, um, and and therefore and, and also it's it's began with with all its uh, uh, terrible uh, consequences, but also its very strong political meaning, the uh, adventurous uh, Napoleonic epopee. Mm -hmm. So the question is: Is a revolution an idea that is exported on the points of on the bayonets? Well, yes, um, especially. Um, you know the French Revolution is uh, uh, substantially different, for instance, for, from the American one. Uh, the kind of the outcome wars, uh, kind of uh, they they happen in, in both contexts, but the ideas are very different. Um, the especially, you know, if you read um, Burke on, generally speaking, you know you know what what we're talking about. You know the the idea that the French Revolution started with certain uh, legitimate ideas of uh, um, equ equality. Uh, um, brotherhood and uh, and um, and um, uh, freedom. We can say liberty meant in in the sense of, uh, let's say, uh, oh my God, there are thunders outside. Excuse me, I closed the window. Um, liberty and freedom can also be naturally different things. So these are words that were um, framed into. Uh, in two different contexts that were interpreted by different classes and the same French Revolution is is a very good example of that. I mean, until 1792, uh, things could go in, in a very different way. There was even a theoretical uh, participation of the monarchy into the revolution, then things degenerated into violence in a way that was naturally very impressed all the moderates of, of Europe at the time. But now there are broader Problems, let's say, in uh, uh, in we can't uh, deal with right now. Um, the 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 literary and artistical um, um, scenario is not influenced by uh, roughly by 1765 to 1785 by the Sturm und Drang, uh, classicism and romanticism, roughly you know operating at this point in the same time from. 1795 circa up to 18 the 1830s, um, the major um, thinkers, major uh, writers are you know, definitely Goethe, that leaves lived from 1749 to 1832, from 1759 and 1805, and a huge amount actually of other uh, writers that gave uh, life to one of the most uh, one of the brightest uh, uh, flourishing uh, of, of of German culture at the time. Um, at this point, the uh, the philosophical um, thought is um, say dominated by uh, Kant uh, and his um, his 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 thought. Uh, Kant lived from 1724 to 1804. Um, his major uh, works naturally did critics to, to pure reason. Um, written in 1781, if I'm not wrong, then um, no, published uh, the first one, and then first time, the second time in 1787. Uh, the foundation of metaphysics and of the customs in 17, um, uh, the metaphysics of, of the customs in 1785, um, the critics of the uh, practical reason, 1788. Critics of judgment, 1790, uh, and the religion w within the limits of reason, 1793. Um, the 
w when he was 12 uh, in, in 1792, uh, von Clausewitz uh, embraced the career of arms. He um, uh, enlists into the uh, to the Prussian army as an NCO, uh, an NCO and uh, flag uh, bearer, essentially in the re in the Prince Ferdinand regiment of of Potsdam. Um, in 1793, he participates to the siege of Mainz, and he re received baptism of fire between November and December of the same year. And in 1794, at only 14 years old, he is um, is named. Um, officer, he's appointed officer. So this is a very, um, you know, difficult moment, convulsive moment. In uh, on November the uh, the twentieth, seventeen ninety two, the the Prussian army is um, obliged to retreat um, from from Valmy. Uh, you know, you know, the Battle of Valmy is this uh, great um, French revolutionary victory that basically uh, made the, the revolution, the French Revolution. Uh, expanding and going on. At that point it could have been choked in many ways. Goethe commented on this um, battle saying from, from this place and from this day um, um, there is um, you know, um, essentially a, a new, uh, starts a new era for humanity. And indeed it's not so, so wrong given the consequences that that brought largely into, into uh, history. Um, on October the 21st uh, Mainz is uh, surrenders to to the French, and on December the second, um, the um, the 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 French, however, are defeated at at Frankfurt am Main. Um, on July the twenty third, seventeen ninety three, uh, Mainz is um, retaken by the uh, anti revolutionary coalition, and on September the fourteenth. Um, the uh, the Prussians win um, at uh, Pirma uh, Pirma Saint, uh, and uh, on be between uh, the, um, uh, the the November the twentieth to November the the thirtieth um, at uh, Kaiserslautern. Um, in um, at this point on April seventeen ninety four, also there is the um, the Aya uh, tra Treatise of Assistance um, s uh, that is signed by Prussia, Austria, and England, and uh, on July the fifteenth, the uh, French victory uh, at uh, Eden Coben. Um, so this uh, this is also a moment of of, of thriving, um, um, you know. Mm, it of thriving uh, artistic and cultural uh, development, in spite of the tragedies of the war, Europe is is at war fundamentally, um, and uh, you have essentially in, in in very importantly a bit later this um, will be particularly important also for von Clausewitz. In 1805, um, it was published the uh, Traité uh, de Grande Opération Militaire of uh, Antoine Henri Jomini. It was a Swiss of the French canton of Vaud, uh, of Italian origin, and uh, Vaud um, essentially attempted to give a first uh, systematization of the fundamental principles of, of war. Um, looking a bit back, you know, from the French Revolution in 1789 was the, the same year in which uh, Lavoisier published the tr uh, elementary uh, treatise of, of chemistry in 1790. Burke, Burke. Um, uh, wrote his reflection of, of the French Revolution. Same year, uh, Goethe uh, pu um, um, pu publishes the uh, fragment of uh, the um, rise of publishment of, of the Faust. Um, and uh, there is also the first um, the first um, steam um, um, lumen mill that is cr uh, created in, in England in 1791. Um, Boswell writes the life of Samuel Johnson, Herder um, the um, ideas on philosophy of the history of humanity, uh, Leblanc um, um, uh, finds out a, a new method of um, of, uh, of fabrication of the of the, mm, the the soda essentially 
and uh, and founds in in 1790 a great chemical plant. In in 1792, um, um, Galvani writes on the strengths of electricity. Volta um, um, composes memories of the um, uh, animal electricity. In 1794, Fichte uh, elaborates his uh, philosophy as doctrine of science. Uh, in 1795, in Paris, there is the foundation of the uh, Ecole Polytechnique. Um, so this is a very dynamic moment, in, in um, def as, you, as you can understand, in parallel with the major political and military events that shatter uh, the, the world. Um, von Clausewitz at this time uh, is still a boy, um, and he, um, however, reveals very strong inclinations for learning. He's a um, he's very uh, is a passionate reader. He loves especially uh, history, and he also displays um, very un uncommon dispositions to to the military synthesis. So he's very well predisposed for uh, for for the mil for for what he would actually prove to become, it is essentially mil the, that the theory he will master, the military theory, and he um, uh, th this um, characteristics of the young von Clausewitz um, make him uh, very much idoneous for the military school of Berlin, where he arrives in eighteen um, in eighteen o one. And he had for master the, uh, you know, Gerd von Scharnhorst, uh, who lived between um, 1755 and uh, 1813, was this eminent, uh, eminent political and military figure, an organizer and reformer in following years of the Prussian of the Prussian army. Um, in this. Um, in this period, the um, von, von Clausewitz essentially studies for two years in Berlin, and he uh, he really ranks among the best students, and he reads the uh, the national classics, and starts to cultivate also this um, type of med meditation that is the, the most congenial to to him, that is the one of the theory of war, as we've seen. So in initially. Um, his model, his literary model, was the um, general principles of war by uh, no, no one else but uh, Frederick the Great. However, very soon, uh, von Clausewitz starts making practice um, from the ancient authors, ancient and modern authors, uh, from Polybius to Nast. He, um, he has this very intense um uh, studying of uh, military writers such as um uh, Montecuccoli and uh, Maurice of Saxony um also Prince uh, uh, de Ligne and uh, Lloyd um Pusegur Folard and Marshal Guibert um so Scharnhorst uh, at this point um, immediately spots the, the the exceptional talent of um of, of this student and Takes von Clausewitz under under his wing fundamentally. This is a very important part of uh, 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 important episode in von Clausewitz's life because um, event in von Clausewitz's life because uh, in virtue of this friendship he can enter eventually into the uh, courtly milieu that, uh, of the Hohenzollern. So these are the years of very intense, um, you know. You know, events, as uh, you know, in uh, essentially on on April um, the uh, the fifth, seventeen ninety five, there had been the, the peace of of Basel, into which Prussia basically ceded to France the um, the territories on the the west uh, bank, uh, left bank of the Rhine. On May the seventeenth. There is this essentially line of uh, demarcation between um, uh, northern Prussia, that is, uh, that remains neutral fundamentally, and southern Prussia that uh, keeps actually uh, fighting against the French. Uh, on October the seventeenth, uh, 
1797 there is the Treaty of uh, um, Campo Formio and in November December the uh, Congress of Rastatt. So in 1799 instead, there is the uh, essentially the liquidation of the Congress of Rastatt and in 1800 Napoleon becomes uh, first consul of the French Republic. In, in December Prussia adheres to the so-called Congress of the Neutrals, uh, practically. Uh, in 1801 there is the um, Peace of uh, Luneville which confirms the Treaty of Campo Formio and in, on February the 9th, 1803 there is the so-called recession of, of Radisbon and Napoleon also becomes um, consul uh, for life. Uh, in 1804 Napoleon is crowned Emperor of the French um, so the French Empire is practically founded. Uh, the following year, 1805, uh, Napoleon becomes King of Italy and on December the 15th there is the uh, finally the Treaty of uh, Schönbrunn uh, to which Prussia uh, obtains the Anova but cedes uh, Bavaria and uh, Ansbach by right to um, uh, to and um, to uh, excuse me, uh, seeds Ansbach and Bayreuth to, to Bavaria. Not uh, Bavaria, obviously, was not Prussian, um, and uh, Clev and Neuchâtel to France. So on December the, uh, the twenty-seven, uh, eventually there is the, the peace of um, Pressburg, that would be the Br today's Bratislava in Slovakia, and into which um, uh, Tyrol, Vorarlberg, and the territories of uh, southern Germany pass to Bavaria. That instead cedes Salzburg and to to Austria, and and, and becomes a, a a kingdom actually, uh, just like the Württemberg, while the Baden is uh, er, um, elected to 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 Grand Duchy basically is erected to Grand Duchy. Um, in this phase, uh, artistically, um, we can see also here a, a great um, a great development. The um, in uh, always in 1795 Schiller wrote the letters on educa aesthetical education of, of mankind um, and um, there is the expedition into Nigeria by Park that uh, opens the exploration of essentially the, the, the African in interland um, in, uh, in France um, government introduces the, dec uh, the decimal metrical system. Um, in 1796 uh, Goethe had written the um, the years of uh, I don't know, say the of princeship of William Meister. Um, I, uh, Laplace uh, writes the exposition of the world system. Uh, in 1797 uh, Zenefelder invents lithography and in 1798 um, Schelling writes the, uh, on the, the soul of the world. Um, the same year Malta, Malthus uh, writes the famous um, essay on uh, the principle of the population. In 1799 uh, Schiller um, completes the trilogy uh, Wallenstein. Thomson founds the laboratory of chemistry and physics at the uh, of the Royal uh, Institution. In the year 1800, Schelling writes on the um, the, the system of um, trans transcendental idealism. Uh, Herschel discovers the infrared rays. Whitney, the North North American Whitney, um, um, starts a basically a production of firearms into which um, that, I that w were fabricated in, in series and uh, into which uh, the single pieces could be replaceable. In 1801 um, uh, Pestalozzi writes uh, um, Leonard and Gertrude Ritter discovers the uh, ultraviolet um, rays The uh, um, Young introduces the, the principle of interference of the um, 
luminous waves, uh, Evans built the first machine, the first uh, high pressure steam uh, machine in 1802. Chateaubriand um, um, writes the um, the um, genius of Christianity and and René Davy um, achieve, carries out certain um, e electrolytical experiments in 1804 Zerturna discovers the morphine in opium and in 1805 uh, Jacquard invents a, a loom for the um, essentially this certain particularly uh, uh, um, that, that, that would be the Jacquard um, machine is a device fitted to a power loom that simplified the process of manufacturing textiles uh, with such complex patterns as brocade, damask and matelassé Excuse me, I wanted to to look at one thing. Yes, okay. Uh, I wanted wait a s wait a Okay. So this is let me sign one thing <laughs> that I have to to check at one point. Um, what else? In in the same years, um, in the, in the two years of um, you know up to the war of eighteen o six, von Clausewitz at this point was uh, carrying out certain routine. Um, you know, charges like um, field service and uh, garrison life that uh, make him acquainted with the many uh, subaltern aspects of the uh, profession of arms, let's say. And in the meanwhile, however, he um, keeps uh, he he keeps on studying. Um, and um, on his own, his favorite uh, topics, and he widens. The, f uh, the field of his um, study with new deep uh, you know, conceptions and acquisitions. He discovers Montesquieu and uh, Machiavelli and he understands that uh, the, the work to which he, he, he is aiming um, can't, um, ca can't really be separated from this very um, uh, rich intellectual um, in nurture um, and a specific uh, technical as well as scientific culture. Uh, also in 1804 he he uh, meets um, Marie von Brühl that um, becomes uh, his fiancée in 1805. So this is a bit of a troubled relation because the, the Marie's uh, family um, is kind of dubious uh, relatively to the convenience to give um, uh, to give Marie in, in, in suppose to the um, to to a military man um, the, the, the Marie's family essentially was was um, was um, married into essentially a, um, a high um, political figure so substantially in a, a, a notable um, a, in um, the of the time so it was this kind of von Clausewitz was relatively uh, you know he was not from from a bad family of course but uh, he did at, at that point his hierarchies were were kind of stricter and marriage was definitely also a matter of uh, of convenience in making social um, Making a social career, scaling, climbing, essentially. Um, so, during uh, the war of 1806, uh, von Clausewitz becomes field aide of uh, Prince Augustus of, of Prussia. That is the the cousin of the of the king, and he fights actually at Auerstedt. Mm -hmm. So, and in the Prussia, you know, the disaster of the of the Prussian army, he gets captured by the enemy and spends one year in prison 
in France. And after the peace of um, Tilsit, he actually that basically relieved and um, re released certain um, important, um, you know, political military offices um, uh, close to 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 Scharnhorst. Um, Scharnhorst uh, in 1809 calls von Clausewitz uh, with him to to come with him to the uh, at the Ministry of War. Uh, making of him one of his um, closer collaborators, um, actually his closest collaborator, and at this point von Clausewitz um, has already defined Scharnhorst as um, his spiritual father in many ways. So what had happened is that um, uh, at this point is that uh, Napoleon had well, okay, let's go on with, with, with the, the figure now that, and, uh, let's say, Napoleon had humiliated the proud army of Frederick the Great that he also he, he had greatly admired. In fact, when he marched into Berlin, he said, in Potsdam, he, looking at the grave of, uh, um, of Frederick II, he's, he said to his officers, you know, um, if, 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 if this guy, he, if he had been still alive, uh, we wouldn't be here now, so render homage to him. Um, so the, the the war shatters the political and social Prussian um, building, let's say, and you know that in, in the treatises eventually that would happen in 1815, the oppressive um, regime that 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 followed uh, in Prussia couldn't really contain a. Um, a tendency that how wanted to transcend the traditional system and of the um, uh, particular um, sovereignties and, and and that looks beyond actually the, the states and, and was looking beyond the states that existed at the time in Germany to for creating some something larger. So in on on June the eleventh, uh, eighteen o six, there had been the, the war declaration of uh, England to Prussia because essentially um, the, the because of the Prussian occupation of Hanover mm -hmm. on July the 12th there is um, the constitution of the first um, Rhineland uh, Confederation Rhine Confederation in which basically 16 German principalities were put under the French protection and on October the 1st there is the Russian ult ultimatum to to France uh, to um, essentially withdraw um, its troops from 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 Germany. On October the fourteenth, the Prussians are, uh, however, defeated in the double battle of mm, Auerstedt and Jena. And on October twenty seventh, Napoleon Bonaparte enters in Berlin. On uh, on July the uh, ninth, eighteen o seven, as we have seen, the, the the peace of Tilsit had followed this the, the moment of apex of Napoleonic power. On October the first, there is the uh, coming back of Stein at the head of the Prussian government. Scharnhorst is um, uh, you know entrusted the reorganization of the Prussian army. And uh, on September the 8th, 1808, there is the Convention of Paris. In uh, On April 22, uh, the 22nd, 1809, there is the um, attempted, the failed attempt to arrest uh, um, the King uh, Jerome of uh, Westphalen from side of Colonel F von uh, Dürnberg. And on April the 28th, um, the Major von Schill marched with this uh, very few ex exiguous forces on his own initiative from Berlin to uh, Dessau and Halle. And um, Schill uh, wins at uh, Dodendorf on May the 5th. Um, and uh, however, on, on May the 31st, a French army um, overwhelms uh, Stralsund where von Schill uh, dies uh, on the field mm. 
and so he, the figure of Ferdinand for shield is basically this figure of uh, the Prussian officers that insurrected without success against French occupation is was regarded uh, as a hero so um, on, on June the 25th and there is also the peasant revolt of uh, Megentheim uh, Mergentheim sorry um, and October the 14th the peace of Schönbrunn in uh, in the meanwhile, um, so th this is th Prussia basically underwent this major military reform promoted by Scharnhorst. So, um, in the in that is in the frame of the politics of the Baron von Stein that uh, after th the collapse of Prussia, so um, compulsory military service is introduced as well as. Uh, the integration of the army with a national militia, the elimination of certain uh, humiliating um, punishments and uh, also of the several privileges of nobility, the renewal of the general apparatus and the preparation of a sort of uh, people in arms for the war uh, of liberation. So this is a bourgeois uh, reform uh, which class values expressed in the importance that the army tributes to the merit mm -hmm. and without you know essentially keeping in in uh, keeping into account the, the social origin of the soldier so the, the Prussians basically learned from the, the lesson of the French Revolution and of Napoleon in um, in, in, in 1810 um, von Clausewitz marries uh, Marie von Brühl um, and he gets um, a considerable position uh, at the Prussian court as um, instructor of the hereditary prince, the future King William. And um, uh, von Clausewitz's studies at this point are extend to mathematics, to logic and architecture, um, um, and uh, however, still insisting on Montesquieu and Machiavelli. And um, the evolution of von Clausewitz's thought in philosophical field um, uh, also um, let us see the, the the influence of Fichte and especially of Kant um, in his um, in his theory. So, <coughs> in uh, in eighteen ten, there had, there had been also this plan of. Um, administrative reformation of Prussia, the introduction of freedom and the occu um, and, uh, of occupation and of work and on December the, the 12th um, in parallel there was the French annexion of Hamburg, Bremen, uh, Lübeck, Oldenburg and Hannover. and in, in 1811 um, there was also a new edict that regulated the relations between the peasants and the Owners, land owners in, into Prussia. So, when in 1812, um, um, after, you know, as a consequence of the heavy pressure from Napoleon, Prussia uh, becomes allied with, uh, gets allied with France against Russia, um, Major von Clausewitz does not uh, waver in he immediately abandons his um his fatherland to um to go uh and and flees to russia when he uh, enlists essentially uh, in in the uh, he he's at the orders of the tsar at that point so this is important because he is uh, he was um condemned uh, sentenced to death in into prussia because he what he had as a Prussian officer, he had basically deserted to, to the Russians at that point. Naturally, he will not be executed when he came back to Prussia in, in, in very different circumstances. So at this point, um, von Clausewitz um, is a sort of philosopher of war. He He's not just a professional of war. He wants to fight against Napoleon that he considers as a, as a despot and as an oppressor. Um, albeit admiring uh, his exceptional 
uh, military genius. So um, von Clausewitz at this point is a, a, a lieutenant um, colonel in in uh, in the Tsarist army, and he um, he fights in in the Russian campaign, and he fights also at the Battle of Borodino. Um, at the end of the French retreat, uh, von Clausewitz is sent as a parliamentary um, to the General York, that is the command was was the commander of the um, troops um, that had been furnished by Prussia to Napoleon, and convinces him to uh, f uh, to sign uh, the Convention of Taurogen, after which the Prussian troops basically. Uh, switched from from the uh, French to the Russian um, side. So, um, although um, Prussia was still formally allied with with Napoleon at that time, um, at this time on on February the twenty fourth, eighteen twelve, there had been the um, in fact, the the treaties of Fra uh, French Prussian al uh, uh, alliance at Paris that had brought, in fact, to the participation of the Prussians in the Russian campaign. Um, also, on March the 11th, there was the uh, edict of emancipation of the Jews in Prussia. Um, in June, December, uh, in the Napoleonic campaign into Russia, and the uh, Convention of Taurogen had uh, happened on December the 30th of the same year. Um, from from a cultural point of view, um, in 1806 Goethe had finished his um, the um, we wouldn't talk about this part um, at this point, Hegel was the the major philosopher. was the hegemonic philosopher at this time. Hegel, uh, born in 1770, died 1831. His most important work, the Phenom Phenomenology of Spirit, of 1807, the Science of Logic, in between 1812 and 1816, the Encyclopedia of the Sci Philosophical Sciences in 1817. The philosophy of law in twelve twenty. These are major works. Um, in um, I in um, eventually, Yomini is still working. Mm -hmm. In uh, in eighteen uh, sixteen, actually, he republished the com completely reread um, Traité de Grande Opération Militaire, and from I and in eighteen thirty seven, actually six years after von Clausewitz's death. From this work was um, re-elaborated the the Précis de l'art de la guerre mm -hmm. that uh, takes into consideration actually the Clausewitzian theory and becomes the basic text of the a major uh, basically uh, uh, the the military schools of virtually er and uh, of all 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 of the um, staff of of Europe uh, at that point. Um, in 1806, Goethe had finished the the first part of the Faust. In 1807, Saint Simon had written the introduction to the scientific works of the 19th century. Uh, Davy had uh, discovered um, the the uh, the elements of sodium and potassium, and uh, the the first steam uh, boat um, uh, of, of of Fulton. Uh, seals on the, not seals, but really, sails or on <laughs> night. Um, that is not correct. But he let's say, um, navigates. That's better on the Hudson River uh, in 1808. Uh, Fichte writes the on the discourse to the. German nation, Schlegel, the on on the language and the wisdom of the Indians. At this point, Goethe meets Napoleon at Erfurt. Dalton founds the 
modern uh, atomic theory. In 1809, Goethe uh, writes the the uh, I don't know what's the title in English. Uh, the uh, the 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 elective affinities. Yeah, this is it. Um, the beautiful book, by the way. Um, Gauss writes the theory of motion of celestial bodies. Lamarck, um, zoologic or uh, philosophy. Um, in 1810, Kleist um, writes the uh, Prince of uh, Homburg. Uh, this style writes the on uh, on Germany. Koenig uh, builds in the first typographical machine with the the stopping system for the for the um, roller essentially. Um, in 1811, Jan um, opens the, the first uh, the first gym would be in Berlin. And Niebuhr um, writes the history of Rome up to 241 BC. Krupp founds his uh, steel plant in Essen. Uh, in, 12, uh, in 1812, Byron writes Harold. Laplace elaborates the theory of mathematical probability. In 18... Um, um, 13, we stop and we start on von Clausewitz. Um, von Clausewitz at this point participates to the war of, of national liberation of Prussia as um, chief of staff of the uh, Russian Prussian uh, Corps of uh, Valmoden. And in um, 1814, um, he, he re enlists uh, with, uh, with the rank of colonel in the um, Prussian army and uh, maintaining his same um, office basically and in 1815 he's the chief of staff of the third Prussian corps um, into which he takes part to, to the battle of Ligny and in, in following that he also enters in, into in Paris so with the end of the war von Clausewitz is designed uh, is uh, designated as uh, uh, chief of staff of the of Marshal August von Gneisenau, 1760 1831, that um, together with Scharnhorst had had a, a very important, very important function in the formation of the renewed Prussian army, and had always had a great, um, a very great admiration for the brilliant and uh, intellectually gifted um, uh, von Clausewitz. Um, in um, in 1818, um, von Clausewitz uh, reaches the rank of major general, and he is nominated director of the uh, Allgemeine Kriegsschule, where he um, basically uh, remains with this uh, charge uh, up to 1830, when Gneisenau calls him uh, to as um, together with him as a chief of staff uh, in the um, in the army that was uh, committed at the time in the observation uh, observation operations at the eastern borders of Prussia in, in uh, as a consequence of the Polish insurrection against Russia so at this it's at this point that um, von Clausewitz um, is uh, gets struck by cholera and uh, after um, three months of the same death of Gneisenau for the same for the same uh, illness. Um, he dies in in Breslau, uh, Breslau in uh, on November the sixteenth, eighteen thirty one. Um, <coughs> on February eighteen thirteen, there had been the constitution of territorial militia of assault troops at the uh, Diet of Königsberg. And on um, uh, in the um, February the twenty seventh uh, twenty eight the alliance between Prussia and Russia that had brought eventually to so in fact on March the sixteenth there was the declaration of war to f of from Prussia to France and in from March to October there, there are the, the various phases of the uh, you know this alternate um, you know phases of the war between uh, the French and the Prussians and um, finally 
between uh, October the 16th and 19th, um, 18 13, there is the overwhelming victory of the Allies o over uh, on the French at the so-called Battle of the Nations in, in Leipzig. In uh, between on February, um, between February the tenth and fourteenth, eighteen fourteen, Blucher uh, had won uh, at uh, La Rotière, but had been uh, eventually he gets defeated in, in the Champagne. And on March the first, there is the Treaty of Chaumont between among the Allies. On March, between March the seventh and the tenth, there are Blucher's victory at uh, Craon at Laon, and on May the thirty, the first piece of uh, the first piece of Paris. So uh, at this point, the German states um, uh, with a rather weak federal um, union become uh, independent. So in, um, in September, there is the Boyan's law on the military, the compulsory military service in Prussia, and as well as the beginning of the Congress of of Vienna. <coughs> so on June the eighteen, uh, eight, eighteen, uh, on June eighteen fifteen, um, the the Congress of Vienna ends. Prussia obtains Pomerania, uh, uh, Western Pomerania, and a part of Poland. Um, three fifths of Saxony and the Grand Duchy of Berg, uh, as well as the Rhineland. Uh, the Germanic Confederation is made up by uh, thirty-eight states, representing the federal diet uh, represented at the Federal Diet of Frankfurt under the uh, Austrian presidents. Um, and on June the nineteenth, there is the famed victory of Wellington and Blücher at La uh, Belle Alliance. So the Battle of Waterloo. On September the 26th, um, there is the Holy Alliance uh, between Prussia, Austria, and Russia. Uh, so this brings to the disappointment of all those patriots that had hoped for a, a different order um, to be settled in Germany. And between um, uh, 1816 and 1831, after the the the, the first um, in episode of the Grand Duchy of Saxon Weimar uh, on May the fifth, um, eighteen sixteen, all the um, territorial sovereigns grant a constitution uh, um, in um, uh, ren rendering possible a relative public freedom fundamentally. So there are the um, German students' agitations against absolutisms, um, also certain attempts to to limit the um, the liberty of the students, just like on May the, uh, the, the, the March the twenty second, eighteen nineteen. There are the also there are the measures of Karlsbad with censorship and a rigid control on the public life, especially in the universities, and um, are that uh, that is adop um, that that are adopted secretly, actually, by uh, Metternich and the um, King of Prussia in the um, in their meeting of Teplitz. So this is the final act of Vienna, essentially. Uh, all the power is concentrated into the hands of the uh, territorial sovereigns on May the 15th, 1820. Uh, so, orders ba uh, order basically reigns in, in Germany uh, uh, until 1830. The news of uh, the July Revolution provokes certain uh, popular, you know, movements. Uh, bloodless popular movements at, at that point, um, and there are certain um, um, f ferments uh, essentially for the strengthening of because of the strengthening of censorship in, in 1831. So at this point, the governments forbid the public reunions and the political associations in the attempt to repress 
uh, these uh, activities. Passing to uh, so the the art and the and the literature and science in uh, 1813. Owen uh, writes the book on the new moral world. In 1814, Saint-Simon writes on the reorganization of the European society. Uh, the Grimm brothers write the uh, fairy tales for children and families. Uh, Scott uh, writes Warley. Fraunhofer discovers the line of uh, absorption of the um, solar spectrum. Stevenson Builds the first um, locomotive. Mm -hmm. So um, th th there is th the first uh, gas um, illumination system in, in the streets in London this time. In 1815, um, Savigny writes his history of Roman law in the Middle Ages. Um, Schlegel um, the fir composes the first part of the history of um, um, ancient and modern literature. Fresnel um, perfections the, the ondul ondulatory nature of light. Um, the gas um, street um, illumination is um, um, lightning, let's say is um is introduced um the uh, davi uh, creates the lamp the security lamp for miners in 1816 there is the first the first gasometer in um uh, the first german gasometer in Freiburg, in Switzerland, and also the first installation of uh, gas uh, lighting in a in a in a company of Berlin. In 1817, Keats publishes his um, poetry, Lamennais, um, his essay on the indifference of uh, in on the matter of, of religion, Ricardo. Um, Rates on on the low the fundamental laws of economy and taxation. Cuvier uh, writes the animal kingdom. Ritter the geography in relation to the history of, of mankind. In 1818, there is uh, the first chart of the exact atomical weights of um, Berzelius and uh, Leopardi composes his Canti. In 1819. Um, um, Jakob Grimm uh, writes his German uh, grammar. Schopenhauer writes the uh, world as the will and representation. There is the first crossing of the Atlantic Sea with a ship that is permanently um, functioning, uh, you know, navigating with with, a sti with steam uh, power. In 1820, um, Lamartine writes poetical meditations. Shelley. Uh, composes the uh, liber uh, liberated Prometheus. Ampere discovers the electro electrodynamic effects. Um, Bio Oersted Savart um, discovered the magnetical effects of the electrical currents. In 1821, the mess um, the uh, writes the evenings uh, evenings of uh, Peterberg Faraday discovers the fundamental principle of an electrical engine. In 1823, Thiers um, writes the history of the French Revolution. Um, Faraday obtains the liquefaction of gas with chlorus. Uh, 1824, Ranke uh, writes on the um, critics on modern historiography. Carnot enunciates the second principle of thermodynamics, very importantly. Um, in in uh, in in eighteen twenty five, uh, Manzoni composed his promised 
I don't know how to say it, uh, the, 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 the betrothed, let's say better. Um, there is the first technical, uh, superior technical institution at Karlsruhe, the first um, a railway in um, in England in in um, um, in um, rail line, let's say in uh, in uh, northern England in 1826. Froebel uh, writes on the education of of mankind. Hölderlin, his lyrics uh, own um, um, enunciates his law on the resistance of metallic. Of metallic um, driving, driving essentially on um, there is the first um, street lightning ga uh, gas street lightning in Berlin. Lobatsky and Gauss create contemporarily and independently from one another um, non-Euclidean geometry in. Eighteen, uh, always in eighteen twenty-seven, uh, twenty-six. In eighteen twenty-seven, Guizot writes the history of civilization in Europe. Heine, the book of chance. Um, Hugo, the uh, perfection to Cromwell. Bear uh, d discovers a egg in mammals. And in eighteen twenty-nine, Balzac. Um, begins his cycle of human comedy. Goethe um, writes the, the years of the peregrination of William Meister. In 1830 Stendhal writes the red and the black. Um, the same year there is the first railway Liverpool-Manchester with, uh, with Stevenson um, locomotive and <coughs> in 1831 Hugo writes uh, Notre Dame de Paris grill parts are the only waves of the sea and of love Faraday discovers the laws on uh, electromagnetic induction so this is um, as you understand a very dynamic moment in in, in Western civilization, um, great improvements, new ideas, new thoughts. Um, as we've seen, von Clausewitz had died of cholera in 1831. So prematurely, you might wonder, you know, what he would have been able to accomplish if he had lived on. Um, in, in the time, he had been director of the Allgemeine Kriegsschule. Um, between 1818 and 1830, he could dedicate himself to theoretical activity, coordinating a really wide uh, intellectual work that he had carried out um, uh, before, um, and um, starting the elaboration of certain material that he intended to to use for his maximum for his maximal theoretical work so he refined his um, philosophical competences and uh, by the way he had also mm, attended with uh, with great r and regular participation the logic classes of the Kantian um, Kiesewetter at the University of Berlin and he had further enriched his own mathematical and scientific culture. He also wrote uh, numerous articles and, uh, and essays in history, strategy, politics, and military problems, fundamentally. And towards 1830, he also, um, by 1830, he had made this enormous preparatory effort, um, giving of you know um, definite form only to the first part of the Foma Krieger, so the own war that we will be reading together. So this was published posthumous um, and it was um, 
you know, the, uh, it was Marie, uh, his wife, that uh, cared the the edition fundamentally, together with his um, with von, uh, with von Clausewitz's friends and uh, and disciples in Berlin in 1832. Uh, the the introduction of Marie von Brühl is is beautiful. It's also very moving. I think we will be reading it in the, in the next video on, in this series. And um, this first edition was in three volumes that um, and that basically make up the the the, f the first collection, um, which is incomplete and will be finished only in 1834 on all the writings um, on war of the general Karl von Clausewitz. So, um, it's, we can say from, from now to today, this book represents the first and the highest um, treaty of, of philosophical interpretation of war, and uh, I think it's needless to say what, what its influence has been in uh, on the military, historical and political thought of the 19th and 20th century. Uh, I'm not aware in the 21st now how far we've gone at this point, where there will be a revival of the Clausewitzian theory. For now, in my opinion, history has done nothing but reconfirming solidly all what von Clausewitz had, has written on, on conflict, on war. Um, so, naturally, von Clausewitz has been interpreted by many, from many sides, even opposite side, politically opposite sides. Um, it's pretty evident. Um, during the Cold War, both uh, the Western and Eastern blo blocks were were using it, and the um, as a book we've d been discussing it recently in a kind of a thorough fashion. I mean, trying to introduce it at least uh, very difficult attempt to to achieve this task, but uh, you you know what I, what I meant. Essentially, it's a very complex book. Uh, it's um, it's difficult to learn it because it takes a lot of intelligence to do it, but it's not difficult objectively to to understand um, bit by bit. And it, it's just your mind that has to work to follow the very uh, thorough system that von Clausewitz has created. In this sense, it's not really a difficult book in itself. It can't be misinterpreted uh, unless you actually misinterpret it because you don't understand it, because you don't make the effort to make your brain function fundamentally. Um, and I banged my hand many times on the phone Krieger trying to understand it, kind of, I hope in part, to, to have achieved something, to have progressed in part. Um, the So there are these permanent aspects of war that are kind of the, the universals. Um, uh, there are so many concepts in, in Clausewitz in doctrine and theory that are kind of uh, so evidently there that uh, that are have been described so so effectively um, on the on strategy, political supremacy, um, on war, the the imponderability of, 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 of chance, of fate in some way. Um, the guerrilla, the, 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 the importance of the human factor, the importance of the war uh, of defense, the dangers of the offensive, the war of annihilation, the nature of the military genius, and many other extraordinary, uh, many other important concepts that are extraordinarily um, explained um, in this work. Um, and that have to be uh, really you, you, the von Krieger is a book you have to keep always with you. It's as if, at least for me, it's it's like that. I I need to go read here and there what basically um, this um, this work has really been about because it, it really tells you it really answers all of your questions in many ways. It's um, it's a work that you can't rely on. To understand, it's not a, wor a work that you have to interpret. In um, it, it von Clausewitz is not trying to express his own opinion. He's he is essentially stating how things are. And as I was saying before, it, it's more about your own resistance 
with your own faults, with your real prejudices, your misconceptions that makes it difficult to read. Because it's something we're not used to, that is to make a you know, proper use of our mind, of our reasons, of our intellectual capabilities. Well, the von Krieger teaches you to do that fundamentally. And this was perhaps a boring list of names and dates. I don't know how interesting you found um, to, to listen to me listing all of these words and names, but uh, I think it's important because, uh, especially if, like me as a medievalist, for instance, you, you're not much into that period in history between the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century have been extremely important moments in our history. One of the most important, from f especially from a philosophical point of view of theory of science etc so it's not a super th this is what I would like to leave you with it's not a surprise that von Clausewitz was the was the consequence in part as an individual of that culture of that period of that mentality naturally there are also an of inks written on you know the influences that von Clausewitz received from from this world um, Obviously, I'm not an expert, I can't go much in depth um, into it, but we can try maybe once, um, if I get the proper books and I try to, to understand. But w I would say one problem with von Clausewitz is, in fact, that people might read a lot about him uh, indirectly, you know, being quoted, other people will comment his work. Um, I start the series on the von Krieger because I, I, I want to go directly at the spring uh, of his um, thought. That is the most important thing to do. I mean, it's not just a general philosophy you can use for, you know, sources in history. And so ob obviously, sources are important. People tend to, to over, you know, even to prefer historiography over sources. But really, if you want to un to understand the Clausewitzian thought, you have simply to read von Clausewitz. And it might not be easy. It might not be easy, especially to translate from German, especially to get the right meaning. I will probably make mistakes myself. I, mean, I can't promise you. And uh, you know, I'm not coming here as an expert telling you you have to listen to me. I'm just, um, I would like to make these lectures as you know, really lectures. That means readings because that's what it is. You know, we will read von Clausewitz together, and I hope to be up to the task at least uh, in for for getting the essential Clausewitzian thought. Then other secondary aspects that. You know, I leave it to, to people who have much, uh, I mean, I know it sounds bad, but there are deeper aspects that have to do also with uh, the general philosophical conception and of the, the order, etc., that I leave to people who are definitely way more expert than me. But von Clausewitz is fundamentally, um, you know, the, the source, the, the direct text is fundamentally what you have to look at when von Clausewitz was explained. Interestingly enough, as I said also in the other video, von Clausewitz had a huge fortune among civilians, although he was a military man. Um, this is very important because, for instance, with Yomini, it happened in the other way around. Uh, why is this? Um, it's kind of a question we could um, well deserve a, a video on its own, but let's say in general that I think the Clausewitzian message contains this um, the importance of the moral necessity of considering war as a political option not for pushing you to to make war but if anything to be ready to to win one in case you you will f you will find yourself in in a war in, in a war um that's very important that's uh, von Clausewitz teaches you how to deal with so many things that even go beyond war that essentially analyze the nature of conflict and so on so while Yomini essentially was appreciated by the more than von Clausewitz, also among the military, I mean, by the, the same military classes that looked in Yomini essentially a sort of manual that he could use. Yomini's work is a sort of manual they could use to actually win battles on the field as if it was, I don't know, a war game. Um, and and they failed because there was also kind of, you know, there were deep philosophical question, positivism, the impact of non Napoleonic um, theory of war. I mean, and how Napoleonic era was essentially absorbed in, in the mindset of the political and military, military elites. Von Clausewitz goes far beyond, and it, it, it looks essentially at, uh, at nature of war in itself, 
and the that that is however as theoretical it can be it's actually way more practical pragmatically effective than Yomini's one that it seems practical at the beginning but it's very theoretical um so and it and in the other interesting thing is that actually Clausewitzian theories have been applied to real war and they made history as we were saying in the other video you know without von Clausewitz there would have not been a second German Empire there would have not been a Soviet Union I mean Clausewitzian thought changed radically radically the history of the world of mankind I'm not kidding um, if Lenin had not been a Clausewitzian you know no Soviet no Bolshevik revolution they would have been crushed it, history would have been completely different without a second German Empire we wouldn't know German you know everything uh, in the balance of the world would have completely changed completely so this is a proof of what the thought of a single individual can achieve on uh, can the effect it can have on world history in a broader way so and and these historical episodes actually reconfirmed that only those who understand Clausewitzian thought are, um, you know, the, who understood it best, obtained the the best results if they were capable enough naturally and if they had naturally the preconditions. Von Clausewitz is not a book that you have to read because if you read it you win wars you know you 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 uh, if anything it, it it prevents you from doing stupid things in theory but it, this is also a very superficial statement um this is not the point it's not really uh that's not w the point that von clausewitz was making von clausewitz was making another very important point and is essentially that there are elements in war you cannot control and you have in order to be effective in war you have to cope with this awareness you have to cope with this condition that is to behave in a certain way accordingly to not necessarily obtain victory uh, you can't obtain history by manual but at least to be aware that there are certain dynamics that can occur and that should make you careful in a certain way that is hopefully the the best one that if you have any chance to victory should make you closer to that if you're capable enough and also this is very complex and we will see what von Clausewitz says I'm just expressing very banal concepts right now but it's just because I, I try to, to brutally s be brutally concise but that w you can't be like that you have to explain things so for now I just hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents and for now I thank you heartily for listening to me, I wish you a nice time and see you next time, bye.